Today, we are venturing into the mighty Texas urban wilderness, AKA my backyard, to see if we can survive using another mysterious orange package. <sighs> Welcome to the Timu Camping Survival Challenge. That's right, today's video is obviously sponsored by Timu. If you haven't heard of Timu yet, it is an incredibly affordable website. Me and my wife actually get a lot of our uh, home decor, kids toys and things off there, but they got a ton of categories. Their site-wide savings up to 90% off and free returns up to 90 days. Use my link in the description below to download the app and get $100 in coupons. You can also use my promo code. So with a $200 spending cap, I wanted to see what all I could get on Timu to build a basic survival kit slash camping kit. I'm sort of a, uh, a, a novice prepper. Uh, I'm into little survival kits, things like that. I love camping, obviously camp all the time, and I've got a ton of gear, but I'm always interested in just building little backpack setups because uh, I go hunting all the time, fishing in remote places, and I always want to make sure I have one of those setups with me. Plus, it's just fun. I like doing it. So I think I put together a pretty good basic kit, but let's unbox everything and see what we got to work with. All right, let's see what we got working inside of these packages here. I actually got two. It's actually the, the fun part right here, doing the unboxing. I've always been fascinated, even as a kid, with like little outdoor trinkets, you know, whether it's pocket knives or little camp tools, all that kind of stuff. My dad used to take me to uh, flea markets every once in a while, and we would uh, we'd shop for stuff like that at flea markets, get you know old knives, tools, enough backstory. Let's get into the first item, which is hopefully a Leatherman style tool. Yes, it is. So I chose to go with one of these because you can really do just about anything uh, with one of these types of tools, pliers, um, you know, little saws, things like that. So these open up pr pretty easy. They come with a sheath. Uh, we've got a big file here. Looks like a screwdriver, little mini saw on there. We've got, uh, you know, a Phillips head. There is a, a knife that is actually very sharp uh, with a drop point on it, okay? We can do a little skinning out there if we wanted to. I actually needed a pair of these. Um, I had a Leatherman years ago, I lost it. I don't know where it is, but uh, you always wanna keep things real basic uh, when you're carrying around a backpack. My hunting bag, I've, I've missed having one of these around. We got an essential tool right there we can do so much with. Let's see what else we got in here. I kind of forgot everything that I ordered. Oh, ho, 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 boys and girls. Major camp tool right here. So I was really interested in this camp axe because of, of the price. And it was also this, uh, this polymer style material right here. It doesn't have a big wedge on the back. It's more, it's kind of slicey. Uh, some grooves in here to, for maybe to do some ratcheting. And uh, it's got a, a flat back end, so we could do some hammering if we need to, but not a great wedging axe. Oh, it's got a ferro rod right here. So we could also use this for starting fires. I did not know that it came with that. Is this a whistle? Indeed it is. These two right here, I can do a ton. I can do a ton with these, and we're not very heavy yet. There's a lot of weight in this one, so let's let's spill the beans. All right, let's open up this bad boy right here. Is this what I think it is? I thought we'd have a little fun with this one. This is a heavy item. Yes, sir, this is a camp stove. I do not have one of these already, so I thought it would be uh, pretty cool to get one. Let's see how hard it is to put together. Looks extremely easy. This will fold out of here. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're gonna put this thing to the test. It comes with a grate on the inside. Uh, that's for your wood. And then there's also a grate that can go on top so you can do some cooking. We're doing well so far on our fire tools. Let's talk about organization. 
Thought I'd throw in a fun one here. This was just kind of a rando. Not a full pack, but kind of a cool little um, organizing pouch. It's kind of like having a side sheath. I can just throw some extra stuff in there. Got a serious deal on paracord. I got a whole roll, man. I use paracord a lot just for making lanyards and stuff for my sheaths and other tools, so I thought I'd get kind of a fancy color. Also could use it hunting. There's a thousand and one uses for paracord, but big old roll of it, cheap on Timu. Now as an alternative cooking source, I thought this would be kind of cool. I, I've never had one of these. I've never had one of the, um, like the wind protective cook kits when I go backpack camping. Uh, or just even truck camping sometimes if I want to make a quick coffee or tea, uh, I will use just a little burner. They work okay, but if it's windy, if anyone knows, if they've ever been, been camping with one of those when it's windy, it takes forever to heat up your water or your meal. So having a little uh, per wind protected kit to do your, your fire and cup set works really well. Fire and cup set, I just kind of made that up. Sounded good though. Let's see, 750 milliliters. So this would be comparable to uh, like one of my biggest cups that I uh, go with backpacking or, or camping. It's got a neoprene sheath around it because these things get hot, y'all. This is titanium, some heat dispersion coils on it. This is the burner system that should attach down here on the bottom. Yes, it does. Look at that French press system right there. Comes with a lid as well. I mean, this thing is decked, absolutely decked. And I've got a stand. I can put my uh, my little butane source on here. It doesn't come with that, obviously, but I've got a ton of those laying around. So I'm excited to put this to you, see how fast it'll boil water. We need some shelter. So let's see what we got in here. Oh, this is a full deal. We've got ropes hanked, serious tarp, okay, with stakes. That's what it is. It's a serious tarp, it's sort of a thick, thick material. Let's see what we got here. Looks to be a pretty good material. One of the things that I like to look for on a, on a really good tarp, if you're gonna bushcraft or um, you know camp with that, is having uh, lots of grommets, including in the center seam. More fire starting tools. Uh, it's a rope in a tube. So you've got this natural material rope right here that's soaked. I don't really know what's in there, but something flammable. So the idea is you take this and you light it and you're able to start your fire with it, get it going. It'll last longer because it's kind of like, you know, putting Vaseline on a cotton ball. That's a trick I use a lot. It allows you to really get the, uh, the kindling lit. Uh, get your tinder lit even, and then you can just pull it and it goes out. Loses oxygen, it goes out, and then you can just keep that thing going. Super light, this is an excellent thing to keep in the backpack. These are actually, this came in a two pack and it's a necklace. So that's pretty slick right there. So the idea with that is you've always got it on you. This is super lightweight. And you can just start your fire in the evening, it's there. It's on your person, these things to get wet. Uh, the reason I like always having these, I start my grills with them. You know, you can't find a lighter. Oh crap, I don't have a lighter. I don't wanna stick my fingers in there to light propane. Uh, these always work. They always work. Lighters don't always work. These always work. This is a headlamp. Yes, it, can. it was a two pack. All right, looks like it's USB rechargeable. Could never have enough headlamps, but this one right here is, is different because it is uh, an LED strip up front. It looks like it also has a, a beam on the side and supposedly it is uh, motion activated. Power up. I feel like that dude in uh, X-Men right now. Figure out the buttons. Wa-bam flashing. I've lost. I need help. Oh no. Oh, oh no, that's it. Look at this guys. Wa-bam. So if this thing will do a red mode, I'm all about it. Last thing here. This is uh, hopefully to keep us warm. Okay. I don't, I don't have like a sleeping bag or anything like that, but this right here is a survival bivy, something I don't own, but I was like, you know what? This thing is tiny, but fit in a pack really nice. And just in case, 
just in case I, I got wet, I, I need to get warm quick. We'll give this a shot. It's cold enough outside, I can tell you if it's gonna work or not. But those are some pretty cool little tools, some basic survival stuff. But let's get out here and let's see if we can build this shelter, get our little fire going and let's cook something up. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is find ourselves a little place to set up our shelter. I'm feeling right here. This is nice, we're not even solo camping. We got our little avian friends. We got a couple of uh, foam deer for a little accent. Well, let's get this tarp out. Basically just stuffed, stuffed all my things in this backpack. Everything fit pretty nicely. I think what I'm, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set up an A-frame, and I cut a piece of our uh, our paracord, got it in my little saddle pouch right here, the side pouch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a ridge line. I'm gonna run it between these two trees over here. This paracord feels a little squishy compared to some other ones I've used, but I think it's still gonna work just fine. Now if you never set up a ridge line, First thing I'm gonna do is just tie a little bowline with a hitch. Should come out quite easily. And we'll run it over here. Now we'll come over here and run our trucker's hitch. that off. Now we got a nice little ridge line. Now let's throw up our tarp. Oh, we do have, we have middle notches. That's good. The nice thing that I didn't notice at first is, is that the tarp actually does have these, uh, sewn in mule tapes with uh, these little metal rings right here, which is gonna make it really nice for uh, just securing uh, the tarp and stretching it out so it's not gonna get crimped up. And then we can secure uh, the four corners down to the ground. I've never tried this with paracord. I usually use a bank line, but I wanna try this. So a little piece like that. We'll go ahead and tie it in a loop. Just a little loop like that. And then we're going to wrap that around. What's nifty about this little knot is, is it allows you to slide it. I'll add a toggle right here. And then when pressure is applied, really pull on it. It shouldn't go anywhere. So we just need a stick. All right, I got that slip through with a toggle. We'll do one on the other side and we'll tighten it up. This thing's gonna be pretty slick. All right, let's find another stick. Here we go. Got plenty of sticks around here. All right, now we can slide this out. Let's tighten it up. There we go. Okay, let's stake these down. Oh, let's see how sharp this thing is. Let's see if we can cut this paracord with it. Yep, pretty darn sharp. So the paracord uh, that it came with, or the string that it came with, it's actually uh, designed to tighten how I'm doing here. But what I can also do is just tie a little taut line hitch and that will keep tension on that, on that line. That taut line hitch is just one of those camp knots. You just, just gotta know, it just works. So good, so useful. All right, we'll do the other two sides or the other two corners and uh, we will have ourselves a shelter. Step one complete. 
we now have a proper shelter. If I wanted to close this down even more, I could. I could just stake it directly to the ground, but I kind of like it the way it is. I got plenty of headroom in here. So let's see what else we got. I'm thinking next, we set up our little camp stove. We'll set up the camp stove and then we'll see how this, uh, this ax will split some kindling and then see if our fire starters are gonna work. Really curious to see how that little rope system does. And I've never done this before. This could get a little sketchy. But setting up a little stove inside of the tent like this so I have heat. I'm thinking I might do it just right on the edge so the heat can escape a little. All right, got a little tray here so we don't set the forest on fire. There we go, stove is set up. Let's go see if this axe will split some wood. Pretty much everything is wet right now. We just had some rain last night and this morning, but I do happen to have a piece of dry ash out of my truck bed. You know, this would be great for like cutting down some small trees. It would get some good penetration for splitting. I don't think it's gonna do very great, but we're just gonna try to maybe get it started. We'll see. Oh, we're getting some split. Problem is it's it's starting to hit that handle. So it's not it's not driving a wedge. And we got a little piece off of there. It's not much weight to it too. It's pretty light. Yeah, so right there, it's catching. It's catching on that handle. So not a fantastic splitter. All right, there we go. We've got some uh, decent little kindlings. Now let's see if this thing will chop. Chop these in half so it'll sit in our stove nicely. Not much weight on it. Man. Really having a beaver chew that one. Okay. I think that'll get us going in the right direction right there. So I'm gonna try to make a fire using my little necklace uh, ferro rod and striker here. Really interested to try this rope. Now I've got, I've got some tinder and uh, normally I just use like cedar bark shavings for the Texas woods, which I have right here. Also got some punk wood. I've made a little nest with that. Also has some shavings from a bow I was making this morning. Some bow dark shavings. Those work good as well. And I've got this punk wood. Now punk wood works really great. If you guys aren't familiar with it, it's rotted wood that dries out. And uh, it makes it easy to catch a spark at times. So I'm going to try this. If I can't get this lit, then I'm going to try the punk wood. So let's see how this, this rope is gonna do. Okay, there's a little spark. All right, it is making a spark, but it's very difficult with this small rod. Okay, I hit the rope and it flared up for just a second, finding it pretty hard just to get a spark. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it cut out, it cut out. So I've hit the rope a couple of times and it is like, it seems like it started to, to go, but it cuts out. I'm gonna fray it up a little bit so that some of those fibers can maybe catch a little better. <sighs> Let's go one time. Man, hit, hit it good a couple times there. It's like the material is wanting to stick to this little comb and it's not flying off where I need it to. All right, so I could not get the rope going, but it looks like I did get a piece of the punk wood that is starting to smoke now, it's smoldering. 
I think the little rope trick would have worked if I would have kept at it, but my fingers were about to start bleeding. Struck that thing so many times. So this punk wood, it will just sit here and smolder until this whole thing is, is, is gone. But what I'm gonna do is break off a chunk of it. I'm gonna put it into my little cedar shaving bird nest. And we'll let that smolder up a bit. So I just broke that up. I've actually got two pieces. So I'm gonna stick one of them. I'm just gonna stick one of them in the fire there. I'm gonna take this piece, I'm gonna put it in my nest. Punkwood's pretty, pretty sweet stuff. If you can find it, you know, at the beginning of a camping trip, let it dry out a little bit. I like to carry one of these little burlap sacks. This is a big one I have, but a little burlap sack, sack you can hang it up things that you want to uh, turn into tenders to make fires. That's going to heat up inside of here. It's going to really start smoking here in a minute. We have fire. <laughs> this could get interesting with the tent here in a second. May have to move this just on the outskirts. There we go, guys. Now we're cooking with Crisco. All right, now I have a little fire that I can move. Let's get hot. That's getting way bigger than I anticipated. Already burned a hole in my tent, in my shelter. All right, so camp notes, getting that baby going. Got a little hot, a little hot inside the tent, but let's see how hot this thing is gonna be. I would say gloves would be advisable here. Okay, now that we have this thing under control, I'm just gonna slowly add the uh, little kindling here until I get it exactly where I want. The nice thing is I can just move it, move it around with those handles. You know, if I was gonna sleep in here, it would be pretty difficult to just get up every 30 minutes or so and add, add some more kindling. So, would it work? Kind of keep me warm for a little while, but I'd really have to monitor it. I mean, it is like wafting heat around here though. All right, I just migrated our little stove over to a uh, little safer area because those little, I noticed little ash pieces were coming out. So I just want to keep the, keep the fire contained. Our wood is cold down basically. Now we can still access it from the front a little um little sketch you definitely want to have a have something you can grab here to open that front to add more fuel to your fire but this should be plenty hot to cook on i did not clean this at all by the way I should probably do that real quick just a quick little wipey now what are we going to have to eat well we have some fresh dough that we harvested just about two weeks ago. And this is one of the rounds, I can't remember which one, cut across the grain. This is a cut that I normally turn into burger or we do in the crock pot. I've never had it on a grill. So I thought I'd give it a try, see what it's like. Got some salt, pepper, garlic on there. Ooh, hear that sizzle? Wabam. So I'm cooking directly over the coals, but we could also, uh, Put that on a little uh, cast iron, something of that nature. These are so thin, I think they're gonna cook up pretty quick though. This is pretty cool, guys. I gotta say, never used one of these before. Pretty awesome. Already starting to sweat. 
Let's take our pliers and do a flip. Ooh, sticking, sticking pretty good. Probably should have put some olive oil on there. Uh, this fire has burned down so fast. I just really wouldn't see it being a viable source to put kind of on the edge of your little canopy tent or anything. Definitely not a tent with a floor. You don't want to do that. It's going to catch on fire, burn holes through it. So I've got some ash that's coming out the sides, even with the tray. But for just making some quick little meals, you could do a decent steak on here. Let's see what we're dealing with. Fresh dough from the forest. Mm. I've never cooked um, the rounds this way, but slicing them thin, against the grain, it's not quite backstrap, but daggum. This is what we're actually having for dinner tonight. This is what Stephanie's cooking, making little protein bowls for the kids. I just told her to try it this way. She gave me a couple pieces as she was cooking. I thought I'd cook them out here. Love having this as an addition to my camp kit as an option. Very cool. I'll be using that in the future. Now, we still have our, our little uh, cooking system right here that we could use, you know, to make a coffee or tea or something. What I'm interested in is this little bibby sack. The life bivy. It's chilly out here, so I'm gonna be able to tell if this thing is really gonna warm me up or not. But essentially, it, does a giant trash bag help you with some aluminum foil looking stuff on the inside? We're about to find out. I mean, this thing is like, it, this seems like a one use deal. It looks like uh, electrical taped trash bags maybe some sort of foil on the inside all right I'm crawling in I'm crawling in but my gosh is it gonna trap all of my body heat oh, it's a noisy sucker I'll tell you that this is the perfect elevation not like actual elevation but my head to toe ratio is perfect right here at this little camp spot i can feel it starting to radiate i mean if you had a blanket on top of this thing it would really trap your heat obviously it's going to be windproof but i i could feel it i could feel it in my in my leg area and my in my stomach there's definitely some warmth being trapped see it would rip very easily but if you were really cold got one of those like wet chill to the bone days you can see that being a player now to get it back in that little pouch that's that's gonna be a challenge and I guess the only thing we haven't tried out let's just try it out let's try out this little quick uh, this is something I would actually use hunting I know, I know a lot of guys run these, these style cooking setups and I always thought they were a little heavy and bulky for a backpack. So when I'm backpack hunt, backpack hunt I usually go with a little smaller system, a smaller cup with uh, the butane source that fits inside, very small burner. But what I figured out was in the wind, it's not good. Like everybody's eating their meals while I'm still cooking mine. Figured that out last time I went elk hunting. So let's just see if this uh, this baby will kick on and work. This is a bigger butane source than I would carry backpack camping, but works perfect for this type scenario. Or backpack hunting, I should say. Let's see if this thing's gonna light up. Wabam. That baby's gonna get hot quick. Oh yeah, 
This thing rips, y'all. I don't even have to put water in there, make a coffee. Okay, you guys, you guys already know. That thing's gonna rip quick. Light's good too. I would say that was probably one of the best things that I found uh, on, on Timu was this right here. I know that I'm gonna use this on a, uh, on a backpack camping trip or a hunt. And that, ladies and gentlemen, completes our Timu camping survival challenge right there. We have created our shelter. Pretty pleased with the tarp, nice tarp. Um, we've created fire with our kit. Uh, we even cooked on it. Um, the only thing I'm not gonna do is sleep out here because I've got a, a nice bed about 50 yards away and there's hot deer on the stove right now. So I'm gonna go eat the rest of, uh, eat the rest of my meal and go enjoy it. But hope you guys learned something on some of the camping tips and if you wanna pick up, pick up some camping gear, survival gear on Timu is cheap. So thank you guys for tuning in for another video in the great outdoors. Don't forget to use my code down below or click on the link to save on Timu. And I will see you back in the greatness very soon. Subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and I'll see you soon. Phew.